What is going on, CyberFam? All right, looks like we got a round two to this one. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, Dave Leon Investing, the guy who actually had Ross Gerber on on his uh, YouTube channel, has taken down the video where he interviewed Ross Gerber. Now, he announced this on Twitter, and the reason is because um, I believe that even he himself felt that there was some more information that was needed from Ross. And, um, you know, he's like, I, I won't put it up until that sort of information is, is provided to him. And I think it's the right thing to do. I mean, um, so honestly, Dave, if you're watching, kudos to you for that, man. But anyway, apart from that, guys, I mean, we all we all have heard this. This is not like it's old news by now. Uh, Ross Gerber, I think, has uh, officially outed himself as a Palantir bear. <laughs> I think he's like going to be our Gordon Johnson, basically. Right. Um, I mean, this this comparison was given to me by one of the viewers. So, uh, you know, you know, who you are. But the thing is, guys, at the end of the day, there's a lot of confusion around this whole like data bit. And I really just want to address some of that right now. OK, because like I just don't understand why this is not that clear. And, and maybe I don't understand because I, I come from a tech background, so I, I understand it maybe a little bit clearer. Uh, but let's see if I can clarify that here. OK, let me just touch on the one of the most incendiary points that Ross Gerber was talking about, which is selling your data. Right. They're going to sell your data to Belarus. They're going to sell your data to Belarus and Belarus is going to use that to somehow, you know, I don't know, <laughs> shove ads down their like their dissidents throats and, and, and police them and jail them and all sorts of dystopian stuff. OK, listen, before I get into the technical aspects of it, Palantir and Alex Karp and other folks have come out very openly and said that we do not store data, right? We don't store your data. And, and, and all that stuff. And this is a different kind of company. Now, there's a reason for this, okay? I need you guys to understand this. For those of you who are still have this as a question, let me explain something to you. There's different kinds of tech companies, okay? Most of these tech companies, say, for example, you go on Google.com, right? And you go and uh, you make a search or whatever the case is, right? The things that you do on that site are logged, right? As soon as you do something on that site, it's logged in a, in a database. Um, that Your interaction in that site happens to be logged on that site's database. This is called first party data. OK, um, there's also companies that deal with third party data. Palantir works a little differently. Basically, Palantir's model is you as your company would bring them your data set. Now, this could be first party. This could be third party. This could be second party, whatever. It could be a Mario party for all that matters. Right. It, it doesn't matter. Like these are categorizations of data sets. You could very well have an entire data lake if you, you know, if you really wanted to, that consists of all of this stuff that I just mentioned, plus other random data. OK, the idea of Palantir is that they will take all of this and they'll start running their inference models on it and give you back something that's a little more human readable and tangible for you to execute on. They really want to emphasize on the decision making post processing, right? Um, they're building their entire platform on the ability to help analysts and help people to actually do or and are part of this whole data process but the ones that make the decision it is supposed to be able to help you make that decision that's the stuff they want to focus on now up until that point there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background right there's a lot of these algorithms that makes it easier for you to get your data out the next time and moving forward um all that stuff is there and that's why this tech is i'm so bullish on it um but you guys gotta understand like it's not related to one or two types of data sets. It is quite agnostic of a platform, or at least that's what they claim to be. And that's what they want to be. So it's very important fact that you guys understand that because what Ross Gerber is talking about is really one dimensional. It's really talking about just one or two types of companies of which Palantir is none of. They're trying to be as agnostic as possible. Is it possible that first party and third party data and ad companies can go to Palantir to run models? Yeah, it's quite possible, but Palantir themselves will not be holding the data and doing anything with it. You guys get what I'm saying? And they actually don't have any privilege of seeing this stuff either. So uh, just because they have integrations with other databases and stuff. So if you have a database outside, um, then you can integrate with that. And Palantir just becomes a middleman. The, there's a lot of possibilities here. It's not like it, it's not like you have to go with their database options or anything like that. There's quite a few integrations here. So important thing to remember okay just to fight the fud here uh like i'm really simplifying this for you guys okay it's not like there's there's different nuances there but the point of this is companies that do this kind of stuff and they, that cater to the data side of it that store and use the data within its own ecosystem usually have some form of a, a like a gimmick right like so for example google's free right facebook is free um instagram all these companies are free and I'm using these, there's obviously other, other companies, but I'm using these ones because it's the most common examples that all of us are used to, right? 
uh, any companies have this, guys. Okay, like so, if you're if you go into your bank, like if you if you go on uh, Chase, right, or if you go on if you're Canadian RBC or whatever the case is, right, they have stuff that tracks your, you know, session data and all this other stuff as you go onto the website um, or whatever mobile app or whatever the case is. So, and and believe me, I've seen it. It literally is like it's quite verbose. Okay, so an example of something that you would find in like first-party data would be, and this is actually in third-party data segments as well. Okay, this isn't just first-party data, but generally the gist of what you see is something like, uh, um, I mean, the visitor URLs, the timestamps, localization, um, like locale, and then you have your like IP. Uh, the browser's language, so that's why they target you for different language ads. The demography, I mean, th there's a few things that you can pull from it, but th those are kind of the general gist. You guys can get a good idea as to what's actually in this segment of stuff that these advertisers get. Now, these companies, the catch is it's free most of the time, right? So Facebook is free, Google's free, uh, Instagram is free, everything's free. You are the product for these companies, right? So it's very beneficial for them to store and, and sort of curate the data accordingly. The thing that Palantir is after is not actually, they don't, they don't care about your data. Even if you're the company, like one of those founder, uh, one of those uh, startups that are using Foundry or whatever company you are, Airbus, whoever, they don't care about your actual data. To be honest, think about it for a second, okay? What the hell are they going to do with your data? It doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, it's just random garbage to them. What they care about is how, they're, how you're going to use the platform, Foundry, Gotham, whatever, to infer from a large, massive data set. See, the thing is, if they can figure this out, the inference engine, and, and do it efficiently, it's going to be like the Rosetta Stone of big data. You guys understand the, the reference that I'm trying to make here? So, like, if they can actually nail this, it's going to be the ultimate thing. Like, they would be, it'll be a winner-take-all market, right? Because they will be the fastest product, probably the cheapest, because they're already fairly, you know, affordable. Um, and, and really, any other competitors would have to copy part of their business model and only offer part of their offerings. Like, it's actually quite a solid plan. So... In a way, it's almost like if they were doing what they were supposed to do, they already should not care about your data. You understand what I'm saying? They care more about the actual inferences and how the platform is being used and how they can tweak the efficiencies to make sure that you get what you want faster. Actually, a lot of other companies are like this too. This isn't very, this isn't only for Palantir, right? Like Snowflake, for example, is also like that. Like Snowflake has a, has a data lake offering where, yeah, it'll store your data. But the, in reality, they don't actually care about what your data is. They, they only care about what stuff you do on the app. This isn't like solely individualized to Palantir. Okay, guys? The difference is Palantir already has a full-fledged product. Their product maturity is quite high, guys. It's quite high. So like they're at a stage in their product where this is already impacting their clients in a large way where their clients are like, oh, we don't really need anything more than just more of this, whatever this is. The stage of growth that they're in is more so just ramping basically, right? So they don't care about your data. If Actually, if they had your data, it would, it would probably be a little bit of a deterrent and, and bring some of their existing processes and efficiencies down actually. Because then they have to worry about storage, they have to worry about like curation, they have to worry about schema, all this other stuff. Um, you know, in reality, it does take care of it in the back end, but that's another layer of business that they have to provide. Do you guys see what I'm saying? The point, the point of all this first party, third party stuff is really what they do is once you get in, you get packaged into a category and then you, you it's called segmentation. So they'll segment you as part of like a, a cohort or part of some sort of group. And then that will be sold to any other companies. And then based on that cohort or based on that group, you will be classified as, you know, um, this person visited Home Depot, so they're most likely going to want uh, the Home Depot credit card ad, for example, right? Uh, like, it's not as clear as you think it is, but it is quite accurate. So that's what that kind of stuff is used for. If they say, you have been watching car videos on YouTube, so you're going to get a Ford ad or whatever the case is, right? Stuff like that. So that, that's basically what that first party, third party stuff is mainly used for. The actual categorization of that data is right now what's very important in, in that in that particular scope of industry. Part of that, if you guys want to research it, is called programmatic advertising. So, you know, feel free to look that up. But um, Palantir doesn't do any of that stuff. They don't need to. It's, it's really not part of their modus operandi. And uh, technically speaking, they don't even have to do that stuff. It's it's actually more detrimental for them to do that. So let's just get that out of the way. Like the stock-based compensation stuff, I mean, I'm myself, I'm learning more about it, but it turns out to me that the float itself is pretty, pretty much has not changed. So I don't think anyone's really getting diluted, but I keep hearing mixed opinions. 
So, you know, we'll see what it is. And on top of that, this guy's had some deleted tweets and stuff, which is crazy. I think uh, Chad Palantar, shout out to you, man. But like a lot of a lot of the people in the Palantar community, all you Palantars are getting at this guy pretty hard, man. <laughs> you guys are all going to get blocked. But it's funny as hell because it's really putting pressure. I mean, when people are spreading FUD like this, it's it's honestly it makes sense what you call them out, right? Um, I do respect the guy. I respect him a lot less now just because I, I mean, I don't like people that spread FUD without actual evidence of anything. I mean, tell me that it's your opinion. I get it. That's cool. But if it's not, a, if it's not your opinion and it's not based on facts, then just shut up. Like, I don't know, you know, like, why are you out here spreading nonsense for actually no reason? It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. So I don't know. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, I had tons of comments. I'm still responding to literally every single one of them. So that's all I got for today, man. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.